Welcome back everybody to part 19 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. In this video, we're going to make our boss move by oscillating forwards and backwards through writing a small versatile script that uses a sine wave. Throughout the video, perhaps you can figure out other uses for this script and I will show you at the end. Are you ready? Good, let's crack on. Following from the last video, our boss is in pretty solid shape, so let's get right into it by creating a new C sharp script, and we will call this script sign, spelled S I N E, movement. There we are. And when it's ready, go ahead and open it up. All right, before we punch in our variables, let's first understand what we need by taking a quick refresh at what a sine wave is and how they work. So for that, let's consult the board. So here's an example of a sine wave. And if it looks familiar to you, that's because you may have seen graphs like this in your high school textbooks, which for me was a long time ago, but I will do my best to break it down for you. So what is a sine wave? A sine wave is a mathematical curve that oscillates, meaning that it flows from up to down or left to right along the Y axis, which will have a value above and below zero respectively in a smooth S shaped wave. Now the value along the y axis is calculated by the sine value along the x axis, which in our example will be time, following a formula that looks like this. The value of y is equal to the sine value of x. And because Unity is such an awesome engine, we can calculate this using the math function mathf.sine. Now what is sine? Let's take a brief little look. Picture, if you can, at the center of our coordinates, there is a circle called a unit circle with a radius of one. Sine calculates this specific angle here, influenced by the value of x, with which to draw a line to the outside of the circle in order to create a right-angled triangle within it. This line becomes the hypotenuse. As a result, drawing across from the point at which the hypotenuse meets the outside edge of the circle is what's returned as the value of y. As the value of x is time, the angle will increase as time passes, giving us a new y value with each increment between zero to 360 degrees every cycle. Connecting these results draws that smooth wave and will continue to do so with each passing cycle. So how can we apply this to our enemy's movement well, the value of y will become our move value, a new position with which to move. So let's head back to the board and start planning out how we're going to work our variables. All right, so first the y value, which we know is going to be our movement. So we will make that a vector two, which we will call the move position. It will be calculated by the formula sine to the value of x, except we're going to modify x, which is time, by multiplying it by a move frequency so we can have better control at the rate, the speed in which the movements are made. Then we're going to multiply that sum by a move distance for added control. With those in mind now, let's go back into our script and start punching in these variables. Okay, let's start off with our vector2 move position, which we'll make private. So we'll just say vector2, call it move pos. There we go. However, we are going to want to make a reference to another vector2, which will be the start position. So we know the default position from where the object is moving from. Then underneath, let's add those variables that will come together to make our x value on our sine wave. And they'll be public, float. And we said the first one will be a move frequency and the second one will be the same it'll be a public float move distance there we go then in the start function let's make a reference to what the start position is going to be and that's going to equal the transform dot position of the game object the frame it enters the scene now that we've added all those let's go to the update function and start influencing the move position of our object. And as we want to move the object left to right, we want to move it along the x axis. So to do that, 
start by typing the move position dot x. So it's only dealing with the x axis. That's going to equal where the position already is, so the start position, along the x axis, so the start position dot x. And we're going to add to that our math f function. So let's start by punching in math f dot sign, followed by some brackets. And inside the brackets here, we're going to put exactly that which we put on our diagram from earlier. So we want to use time. So we'll type in time dot time and multiply that by our move frequency. Then outside the brackets, we're going to multiply the sum of sine by our move distance. There we go. So that will influence the movement on the x axis, giving us this to and fro oscillating movement. Movement, which we have to now update every frame by underneath saying that the transform dot position is now equal to a new vector two, so a new position. And inside the brackets, that position is going to be our new move position on x, so move position dot x. And we are unaffected on the y, so the transform dot position dot y remains the same. There we are. If you save that now, let's go put this to the test in Unity. So let's head back. Then let's find our sign movement script, add it to our boss. And in the inspector, let's assign a move frequency and a move distance of one. Hit play. And we can see now that the boss moves from right to left in a very smooth oscillating motion while he fires his lasers at us. That's working brilliantly. But what if we wanted to do this for the y-axis? We could do that very easily by making one simple change to our script. So let's head back and make it happen. All we're going to do is give us the option as to whether we want the object to move along the x or the y-axis. And to do that at the top, we will add a public bool called move hori, move horizontal. There we go. Then in the update function, Let's copy these two lines of code, delete them for a moment, and in their place, type in if move hori. So if move horizontal is true, we're going to move along the x axis. So we can just paste that code right back in there. The flip side to that, of course, if we want to move on the vertical axis on the y, we will leave move horizontal as false. So we will say else. And inside here, paste that same line of code, and all we have to do is swap the x value around to y. So it'll be move position dot y, start position dot y, and here in our new vector two, we're going to swap these values around. So it will then be the transform dot position dot x by the move position dot y. There we go. Save all that now. Let's head back into Unity, where I'm now going to reveal to you another use for this script. Perhaps you've figured it out by now. If you guessed to create moving platforms, then you are absolutely correct. For now, let's just deactivate the boss. We don't want him shooting us. Then, in your prefabs, drag any platform into your scene. Let's get a better view. I'm gonna move this one to the right. I'm gonna duplicate it, move that one to the left. Highlighting them both, I will apply the sign movement script to them. And on one of them, I want it to move horizontally. So I will tick the box, add a value of one to frequency and distance. And on the other, I want it to move vertically. So I'll leave it unticked and add a value of one to frequency and distance. Now, when we hit play, we have now created two very simple, very easy moving platforms. You can go all out with this code and experiment with different enemy types, platform types, or environmental hazards is entirely up to you. Let's head back into Unity and let's clean up our scene by removing the two platforms, bringing the boss back, and do not forget we want him to move horizontally, so make sure that box is ticked. And that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching once again, guys. I hope this video proved useful to you. If it did, please do consider subscribing and supporting the channel. 
On that topic, I would like to thank all new subscribers. I'm glad to have you on board with us. And should you need any help or assistance, please do feel free to get in touch with us either here or on our social media. And if you need any references for the code, it can be found in the description below. Take care, guys. Have fun with your projects, for we're almost at the end, and I'll see you soon.